It's never too late. God is set to give you a notable miracle. There is a saying that what goes around always comes around. We usually become a victim of the circumstances that happens around us. What I mean by that is that what happens around us most atoms shapes our act and character, either positively or negatively, since life can be like a roller coaster ride. There are moments of exhilarating triumphs and times when you feel stuck in a rut, wondering if you will ever reach your dreams. Discouragement can set in, whispering doubts that it's too late to pursue your passions or achieve your goals. But here's the beautiful truth: it's never too late for a miracle. For God is set to help you out and give you a notable miracle that will amaze all that hear about it. Ensure you watch this video to the end and be encouraged to hold fast on God, and more so for your faith to be stronger. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and faith helps to open doors in the realm of the spirit for positive things to come our way. And if you have not subscribed yet, ensure you do that now. God bless you richly. Now, fasting your belt as we delve deep into this topic, for you to be encouraged and keep following God in all circumstances. Permit me to start by telling you some powerful Bible story of people who passed through difficult situations and have their lives totally changed and blessed by God, because they held fast unto God. Listen, the Bible is filled with stories of remarkable second chances and divine intervention. Sarah, in the book of Genesis, received the miraculous promise of a child at her old age. Genesis chapter 17, verse 17. This is a clear story that tells us that no matter how long it appears that the issues had lasted, God will certainly come and give you a miracle. The same God who intervened for Sarah by giving her a child will intervene for you today in Jesus' mighty name. Also, the prodigal son, lost and broken, found redemption and restoration in his father's embrace. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. Even when we stray from the path, God's love remains constant, offering us the opportunity to start anew. Are you there and feel your case is beyond the help of God? That you have gone too far for forgiveness or God's mercy? Permit me to tell you that God, with an open hand, is waiting for you to come and receive your miracle of salvation and forgiveness of sins. For if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And as you come to Him today and confess your sins, He will not only forgive you, but He will give you a miracle of living above those sins. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Here are some reasons to hold on to God even when you feel like giving up. Number one, God's timing is perfect. Our perception of time is limited, but God sees the bigger picture. What seems like a delay may be a necessary preparation for something even greater. For setbacks are God's comeback plans for a better future. So most of times, when we complain that we are held in a specific place for long, permit me to say it is God who is just using that to train you. And when He is done with you, He will give you a miracle that all that hears it will be amazed. Remember when Hannah gave birth to Samuel the prophet. In First Samuel chapter two, Hannah prayed and she said, "I am very happy when I think about what the Lord has done. The Lord has made me very strong." I can laugh at my enemies because you, Lord, have saved me. That makes me very happy. Nobody else is holy like the Lord. There is no other God except you, our God. You are the only rock where we can be safe. Do not boast or speak proud words. The Lord is a God who knows everything. He judges everything that people do. The weapons of brave soldiers may break, but weak people who fall become strong again. People who had plenty of food to eat have to work for it now, but the people who are hungry have enough food now. Women who could not have any children have now given birth to seven children, but those who had many children are now alone. The Lord gives both life and death. He sends some people to their graves, and He raises other people up. The Lord makes some people poor, and He makes other people rich. He causes some people to be important, and He puts other people low down. He raises up weak people from the ground. He lifts poor people up out of the dirt. He makes them become friends of princes. He puts them in places of honor. The deep places of the earth belong to the Lord. He built the world on a strong foundation. He takes care of his faithful people, but he puts wicked people in a dark place where they can do nothing. It is not a person's own strength that makes heaven like loud thunder. The Lord will judge everyone on earth. He will make his king strong. He will give power to the king that he has chosen to rule. You can see that from this passage. God's dealing with his children are done in due time. This shows that God's timing is divine. And hold on to the promise that He works all things together for good to those who love Him. Dot Romans chapter eight verse twenty-eight. Number two, small steps lead to big results. Don't be discouraged if your progress feels slow. As long as you are moving, you will certainly get to your destination. The case is that you just have to keep moving. As long as move, you will get there. Every positive step, no matter how small, brings you closer to your goals. 
Celebrate your victories big and small and trust that consistency and perseverance will pay off. Number three, you are never alone. God is always with you, even in your darkest moments. The Bible assures us for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua chapter one, verse nine, when you feel alone, draw strength from his presence and find comfort in his unfailing love. Here are some practical ways to reignite your hope and move towards your miracle. Number one, rekindle your dreams. Take some time to reflect on your passions and aspirations. What ignites a fire in your soul? Write down your dreams and goals and visualize yourself achieving them. Number two, embrace the power of faith. Faith is a substance of things hoped for about the evidence of things not seen. Hebrew chapter 11, verse one. Believe that you are capable of achieving great things. Faith is the bridge between your dreams and reality. As Helen Keller said, the only way to see the light is to believe that the light is there. Don't downgrade your worth. Believe in what God is doing in and through you. Every word and promises of God in your life should be held fast with faith, for it will surely come to pass. Number three, take action. Don't wait for the perfect moment to begin. More so, don't wait for someone else to do it. Start where you are with what you have and take one step at a time. Remember what happened with the four lepers in 2 Kings chapter 7. At this time, there were four men who had leprosy. They were at Samaria's gate where people went into the city. They said to each other, we should not stay here. If we wait here, we will die. There is no food in the city. If we go in there, we will die. And if we stay here, we will die. So we will go out to the camp of the Syrian army. We will ask them to be kind to us. They may let us stay alive or they may kill us. But we would have died anyway at evening time. The men went towards the Syrian army's camp. When they reached the edge of the camp, they saw that there was nobody there. The Lord God had caused the Syrian soldiers to hear the sound of horses, chariots, and a very big army. So they said among themselves, listen, the king of Israel has paid the king of the Hittites and the king of Egypt to come here and attack us. So that evening, the Syrian soldiers all ran away. They left their tents, their horses, and their donkeys. They did not take anything with them. They ran away to save their lives. When the four men reached the edge of the camp, they went into one of the tents. They ate and they drank what was there. They carried away silver and gold and clothes. They went away and they hid those things. Then they came back and they went into another tent. They took the valuable things from there too and they hid them. Then they said to each other, we should not be doing this. It is not right. This is a day of good news and we have not told anyone. If we wait until the morning, we will be in trouble. We must go now and tell the king's officers what has happened. So they went back to the city's gate and they called out to the guards. They said to them, we went out to the camp of the Syrian army. There was nobody there. We did not hear anyone at all. The horses and donkeys are still there where the soldiers had tied them. The tents are still there as they were before the guards at the city gate then shouted the news. People in the king's palace heard the news. The king got up in the middle of the night. He said to his officers, I will tell you what the Syrian soldiers have done to deceive us. They know that we have no food. So they have left their tents and they have hidden in the fields. They are thinking, the Israelites will surely come out of the city. Then we will catch them while they are still alive. We will then get into their city. One of the king's officers answered him, send some men with five of the horses that are still in our city. We will see what happens to them. All of us Israelites in the city will soon die. If the Syrian soldiers kill those men, they would have died anyway. So send them out of the city to find out what is happening. So they prepared two chariots with their horses. The king sent the men to see what had happened to the Syrian army. He commanded the men, go and look for them. The king's men followed the Syrian soldiers as far as the Jordan River. They saw many things that the soldiers had dropped along the road. They had dropped clothes and weapons because they were in a hurry to run away. So the men returned to the king. They told him what they had seen. Then the people in Samaria went out of the city. They took all the valuable things from the Syrian soldiers' tents. So then people could buy five kilograms of good flour for one piece of silver. They could also buy 10 kilograms of barley for one piece of silver. That is what the Lord had said would happen. The king had told his special officer to stand at the gate of the city. When the people ran out of the city, they knocked him down. He fell under their feet and he died. The man of God had already said that this would happen when the king had come to his house. Elisha had said to the king, this time tomorrow, Five kilograms of good flour will cost only one piece of silver. Ten kilograms of barley will also cost one piece of silver. You will be able to buy this food at the gate of Samaria. Glory to God. Imagine if the four leprous men did not stand and take a move, then this mighty miracle would not have happened. 
But because they moved, God did a powerful miracle. In the same way, you must arise and take action and watch God do the rest. As you move forward, opportunities will open up and doors will begin to appear. Number four, find inspiration. Surround yourself with positive and encouraging people who will support you on your journey. Read stories of others who have overcome challenges and let their victories inspire your own. Remember, your miracle is not a matter of chance, it's a matter of time, faith, and action. With unwavering belief, unwavering determination, and God's grace by your side, you can achieve anything you set your mind to. Let go of the past, embrace the present, and step into the future with confidence. Your miracle is waiting for you. Bow your hearts, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before you today, recognizing your unwavering presence and infinite power. I lift up my audience to you, those who are standing in faith and eager awaiting your divine intervention in their lives. Lord, as they wait upon you, I earnestly ask that you increase their faith, knowing that faith is the catalyst for miracles. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would saturate their minds and hearts, filling them with an unshakable confidence in your ability to move mountains. Give them unwavering assurance that your timing is perfect and that their miracle is on its way. Strengthen their belief in you, O Lord, for you are the God who does exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or imagine. God, I implore you to ignite a fire within them, igniting a passion that cannot be contained, as they eagerly anticipate the moment when your miraculous power will manifest in their lives. Fill them with an immeasurable expectation of the astounding miracle that you are preparing to bring forth. Lord, I beseech you to grant them a miracle so extraordinary, so awe-inspiring, that it leaves everyone astounded and in awe of your mighty works. Let it be a testament to your indescribable love, unyielding grace, and limitless power. May their miracle serve as a beacon of hope to those around them, testifying of your goodness and faithfulness. Father, help them to embrace patience during this season of waiting, knowing that your plans are higher than ours and you work for the good of those who love you. In times of uncertainty, strengthen their resolve, safeguarding them from doubt and discouragement. Grant them the endurance to continue standing firmly in faith until their miracle arrives. Finally, Lord, I pray that through this process they would draw closer to you, deepening their relationship and growing in their understanding of your ways. May they seek you wholeheartedly, knowing that you hold the key to every miracle they desire. In faith, we trust and believe that you are a miracle-working God, and we await with anticipation the moment when your mighty power will be displayed in the lives of my audience. Uphold their faith, sustain their hope, and open the floodgates of heaven to release the miraculous breakthrough they long for. I ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks for watching this video to the end. I trust you were blessed. Like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more of inspirational and motivational videos that will bless your heart. Remain blessed.